In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a wire armature that you can adapt to use in pretty much all of your needle felted sculptures. So it's a really great technique. My name is Charlotte Allen and you've reached my channel, The Felting Alchemist. So I wanna show you this technique because I use it in pretty much all of my sculptures. I use it in my people, my mermaids. Um, I've used it in my mice, uh, foxes. So you name it, you name the creature and I've used this armature in. I've adapted it so that it works for that particular sculpture. But once you've got the basics of doing this, you could pretty much make anything you want to with an armature in it. So I'm going to show you today how to do that and I've got some florist wire here which I've used which I think is 18 gauge so not overly thick but thick enough that it's nice and solid to get a nice nice bend in your armature and make it nice and poseable and then I'm also going to show you with um, a great material that you can use if you're a beginner and that is the uh, chenille covered pipe cleaners and they're excellent because you don't have to worry about the wool sticking because you've got this lovely um, chenille covering over the wire which makes it really easy for the wool to stick when you're making your sculptures. So I'm going to show you this technique using the pipe cleaners first and then I can show you also how you can do it using the florist wire. It's effectively the same thing, it's just a bit more tricky in terms of the thickness. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is take one of your pipe cleaners. Now this is a four millimetre pipe cleaner in terms of the thickness of the wire, okay, and I think it's about 22 centimetres in length, give or take. So I've gone with black today, but they come in loads of different colours. So if you're making something, say like, I don't know, say you're making a mouse and you want it to be lighter coloured, you could use white or they also do like a very light baby pink as well. They do it in yellow, you name it, they do that colour. So there's loads of options there. So the first thing you want to do is you just want to fold this in half. So I'm going to put my two ends together. I'm going to put my finger up the top like this to get it nice and taut. And then I'm just going to pinch it. So there's one. So you want to make sure that your ends are matching. You don't want to have one longer than the other. You want to make sure that they're both even. So I'm going to do that again with my, my second pipe cleaner. So again, make sure the ends meet. I'm going to put my finger through, push that upwards and then just pinch the end. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that first pipe cleaner that we used and I'm going to twist the top of it. So you've got these two ends here that are loose. And then I'm going to just use my, my left hand to, apologies, my right hand and hold with my left hand, my non-dominant hand. And I'm just going to twist. So I'm going to do four twists. So one, two, three, four. And you want to keep this nice and tight. Don't do a loose twist. Try and get it as closely together as possible because that, that gives you then a nice firm base to then wrap your wool around when you're making your sculpture. So I've got my four twists in there. I'm then gonna take my second pipe cleaner and I'm gonna place it. So the end that we folded, I'm gonna place at the bottom of the last twist that I just added. And then I'm just gonna splay those out slightly. So here you go, you can see, so this is kind of going at the front and then you've got these two shorter legs coming down at the bottom. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold my shorter end, which is underneath this one, over the top, and I'm gonna go for four twists this time again, and I'm gonna keep them nice and tight again. So I'm gonna try and show you as best I can. So one, two, three, four. So your shorter end should be back in its original position and then you've got the longer end poking out at the top. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So one, two, three and four. Okay, so now we've got our twists in here. We've got our legs in kind of a bit of a strange yoga position at the moment. So what you want to do is you want to take your longer legs that you've got here and we're going to bring them backwards so they're kind of coming out of the, the neck area, if you like, of where our head's eventually going to be. And then you've got these two shorter pieces here that are coming at the bottom. The next thing I'm gonna do is to pop one over the other in terms of these two pipe cleaners here. It doesn't matter which way you go, you can go one way or the other, but one pipe cleaner goes over the top of the other 
and here I'm going to go for six twists and I've this is probably about an inch an inch and a half in length but you can make it as long or as short as you want to depending on the size of the sculpt you're making and really it's all about practice and just seeing what works for you and that particular sculpture so I'm going to hold that in place and I'm going to go one two keeping them tight still three four five and six so there we go so this is going to form our torso our back legs and then this is our our front legs here so now we've got this in place what we want to do is we want to get our proportions correct for when we actually start adding wool to our sculpture so the first thing you want to do is you want to first of all trim the legs okay don't trim the arms first because then you're going to get yourself into all sorts of pickles with proportions and it might look a bit bit wonky donkey a bit weird so let's trim our legs first and we can gauge then how long we want our arms to be based on the length of the legs so i'm going to take my wire snips here and i'm make a, i'm going to make um i'm going to make a fox so i'm going to have my legs roughly i'm just guessing here about two inches in length so I'm going to bend the first one. I'm just using my nail to push that in. So I've got a roughly two inch length there. And then I'm just going to do the same with the other leg, basing it on the one I've already bent. And then I'm going to take my wire snips, just move that out of the way. And I'm just going to trim a little bit past where I've done that bend. So you've got about a centimetre and a half there. And then all I'm going to do now is fold these bits here, which are our sharp ends, over. So they're not going to cause anyone any problems. And then what I'm going to do next is then bring my arms down and then looking at the length of the legs, I can then gauge where I want my arms to be. So I think they just need to be a little bit past the bottom. So I'm going to go here like so. It doesn't matter if they're a little bit long because you'll find that when you start adding wool to things and creating shoulders and things like that you'll lose some of that length so don't worry too much if they're a bit long you don't want them to be loads loads longer than the the legs because then it looks a bit looks a bit like an orangutan unless of course you're making an orangutan in which case that's fine so again i'm just going to cut a little bit extra before the bend so that we can fold that over there we go and then again fold this over like so so now you've got what looks like a little person or if you put the legs down like so you've got the basis of a little animal so you can see what i mean when i say you can do pretty much anything with these sculptures so because i'm making a fox and actually he is going to be stood up so he's going to be kind of like a humanoid fox i need to make sure that he has a tail and this is going to really help me with the stability of the character as well so it can be stood up if it's going to be a piece that's going to be i don't know in like a baby's nursery or something like that so i'm going to take my third pipe cleaner and i'm going to fold it in half once again and this time where I folded, I'm going to take my wire snips and they're just, these are just like jewellery cutters. They're nothing special. And I'm just going to cut in the middle. So I've got half a length. The bit where I've cut, you'll find it bends slightly. So this is the piece we're going to use to wrap around the body. Okay. Rather than using this piece. I just like to do it that way, but you don't have to. So I'm going to start at the top of the torso and I'm going to kind of hook it hook it over so it's kind of where that bend is hooked over the torso and then I'm going to hold that down with my left hand and then with my right hand I'm just going to again twist nice and tightly around until I get to the back and then I'm just going to pull that out and then I'm going to fold about two centimeters over and there we have it you've got your tail and I'm just going to the nice thing with these are as well, they're nice and soft so that you can move them with your fingers. You don't have to use any tools to manipulate the wire. So there you go. So that's our first armature of what would be a fox. Okay, so I'm going to show you again and this time let's do a person. So these are a lot thicker and a bit more tricky to use but you're using the same method. Okay, so you can lie there Mr Fox. So once again you want to take your wire and you can use any thickness of wires to make armatures so if you're making something really large and you need it to be nice and solid and not go anywhere then use a thicker gauge wire 
but like I said I think this is an 18 gauge this one that I'm using and it's just floristry wire so I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm going to take a second one and fold it in half again like we did last time okay and then what you might find, because it's a bit trickier this time, you can't use your fingers so easily, I'm just gonna use my wire snips and very gently, I'm just gonna push that top part together. So it's pinched together really nicely and tightly. And then I'm just gonna twist one, two, three, and four. So I've got my twists there, like we, like we did before. And then I'm gonna take my second wire and place it Oops, oh no, it's gone on the floor. Oh, it's escaping. So place it over the neck. So you've got this part shooting out. And then again, I'm gonna go for four twists. One, two, three, four. And the same on this side. So the shorter end goes over the top of the longer end. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my wires one over the top again but I'm going to make it a bit shorter this time what you want to do though is you want to make sure that they're symmetrical you don't want to end up with it kind of being like this or kind of like that because it looks a bit well it, you, you're just going to have a really unsymmetrical sculpture and it's going to look a bit ugly so keep them nice and symmetrical like so and then again just twist one two three four five I'm just going to go for five this time. Actually, let's go six. There we go. Okay, so I've got my head and neck here, and then I've got my torso. And again, I'm just going to straighten all this out. And then I'm going to cut my legs. So I'm going to cut my legs a little bit shorter this time. But because I'm working with a thicker wire, I'm going to allow myself more wire to fold over the top because it's quite hard to fold it over when you've got a small amount. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. So I'm going to have my legs roughly here. So they're probably a couple of centimetres in length. So there we go, just there. You can see the wire shooting out. And then I'm going to trim and I'm going to leave excess, but I'm going to trim almost as much as I folded. Oh, it's shot off somewhere. There we go. And then I'm just going to fold that over and I'm going to twist this round because they can be quite sharp these and you don't want, especially if a child's handling it, you don't want them to spike themselves. Once you've got the wool over it, it's not gonna be an issue, but it's just, just in case really. And then again, do the same thing. So I'm folding it over and then just twisting it round. And don't be afraid to move things out of the way. So if you're sort of struggling to get your fingers in there, just pull the other leg away, it's not a problem. Okay, like so. So they should be the same length. And you've got these kind of bits coming up here, but don't worry because they're gonna get bound around with wool, so it's not a problem. And then once you've got your, your legs in place, then we can put our arms in place. So we've gone for shorter legs this time, so we're gonna go for shorter arms. So I'm gonna go for here and here. And it's all, I, I just kind of use eye as a bit of a gauge really. You could take a photograph as well. That's a really good technique. So if you take a photograph of something, sometimes you can't see things as easily with the naked eye as you do in a photo. So take a photo and look at it and then you can work out actually does it look okay or does it could it use a bit of manipulation. And then I'm just going to fold those down again. And there we go. We've got our hands. There we go. And then finally, I'm just going to add in my tail so again I'm going to take my wire I'm going to cut it down the middle and then I'm going to wrap it around the torso have it coming at the end just get that sharp bit there twisted round like that and then I'm just going to fold the end over here, a bit more than that, there we go. And then I'm just going to twist this so it can't go anywhere. There we go. That's our skeleton for our little mouse. 
So there you have it. So that is how you make armatures. So I hope you found that helpful and eventually I'm going to progress and make some videos on how we actually cover our armatures and make creatures with them. So I hope you come and join me for that one. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please feel free to like it and feel free to subscribe to my channel as well because I'm posting daily at the moment. So hopefully there'll be lots of really helpful hints and tips for you that you can use in your needle felting creations. Creations. I said that a bit weird. Thank you ever so much. Bye.